Hello and welcome to the WCOM Basics Differential Equations series. Uh, this video, I'm just going to go over amplitude phase in a, in a better way, since last time I felt like I was a bit rushed. So we have an undamped uh, oscillator with no force acting on it. So we just have a mass and a spring, basically, um, dividing throughout by m. Uh, and then one thing we're going to notice is that k over m is exactly equal to omega squared, uh, which is a, a variable you might know from physics, which is angular, mo angular velocity. And, I mean, for our purposes, you can just think of it as a way of condensing k over m. Uh, there's physical meaning to it. So finding our characteristic equation from this. It's going to be just r squared plus omega squared equal to 0. And our roots are going to be uh, 0 since uh, b we have no damping coefficient. So uh, this is from the binomial theorem. So 0 plus or minus i omega, since we're taking the square root of omega squared. And a is just 1 here. So we have our p and our q, which is 0 and omega respectively. So if you just plug that into our just basic generic equation for x as a function of t, we have uh, this combination of cosine and sine. Um, but we, we want to have this in a more easy, easily digestible form. Uh, this, this kind of is a mess to look at. Of course, this is just 1. So I'll uh, just delete that since it's multiplying throughout. Um, so one thing to notice is that this is like, uh, you might remember, like a triangle from the unit circle. where we have uh, C1 and C2 um, on the x and y, and we have some amplitude and some angle at which our oscillation is um, offset by. So uh, for example, if phi was 0, our oscillation would just be going back and forth like this. Or we could uh, have some phase at which our oscillation is happening. Um, amplitude obviously is just. using Pythagorean's theorem is just the square root of c1 squared plus c2 squared. And then uh, our, our phase, phi, is just um, um, it's just c2 over c1 is the tan inverse of c2 over c1. Uh, one thing to note here is that this, this will always assume that and give you back an angle that is in the first quadrant. So um, one thing that you want to keep in mind is that, for example, if both of your um, if both of your c two and c ones are negative when you're solving for this, you're going to want to add pi to uh, phi because this is only going to get. Um, tan inverse is only going to give you this small angle here, but we want that whole phase shift. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. There is a, if you do a couple th things, you'll memorize kind of a, an algorithm just to help you through it, but it's nothing that you can't think through. So putting this x sub t into amplitude phase form, Uh, so we just have a cosine of omega t minus phi. So not only is this easier to look at, it also tells us the amplitude of our oscillation 
and how much it has shifted based on this fee. So yeah, that's uh, a little amendment to the series. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.